beautiful bright uh, morning and uh, we are going to discuss uh, the beginning of our lesson and the whole semester today what is language so the first question which uh, we uh, should have to face today is uh, it should have begun somewhere language must have begun somewhere it didn't just start off uh, in the midst of uh, nature i suppose uh we are going to discuss where language began how it might have begun how something some random occurrence might have prompted language how anything how evolutionary or how the sudden theory of language might have come into effect uh we are going to discuss the branches of the subject but before that we need to understand what the subject is linguistics and anthropology are two different disciplines they are very similar in one way anthropology studies human beings and linguistics studies the language the scientific basis of language so it's basically two sides of the same coin it's a discipline which aims to combine at least two different subjects anthropology and linguistics anthropology because it deals with human beings linguistics because well human beings communicate and without communication there is no us in this course we are going to look into different sorts of human behavior communication structures of communication what they are all about this is the beginning of our research into human habits human culture human tradition and everything which has to do with language branches of linguistics like phonology phonetics morphology semiotics semantics uh, syntax neurological linguistics or neurolinguistics computational linguistics all things like google facebook all these big giants use computational linguistics sociology and finally linguistic anthropology so we can also discuss things like why do we speak when i see something beautiful like this why do i feel the need to discuss it with someone else why do i feel like saying oh gosh it's such a beautiful sight we must have our reasons uh, th- there is there is a lot of beauty around me right now if i just pan the camera around you can see there are a lot of beautiful things around like it's it's just green green and green all around me but the fact that you can understand what i'm speaking means that you understand my language Have you heard of the word sunny? You see it's a sunny weather behind me. But if I say nisa, what's the meaning of nisa? I just combined the same phonemes round. I just combined the same phonemes in a different way, sunny and nisa. So nisa doesn't mean anything to you, but I'm using the same phonemes which you used every day. How do they make sense? How do those same phonemes make sense to all of you? that's because we are trained to understand that language being used in a specific way makes sense it shouldn't make sense to you if it's being used in a different way and it wouldn't that's the same for everyone language also preserves you see everything you learn about language everything you have learned since you were a child everything around me everything around you you should have a name for everything if i pick up a random object maybe this plant here I don't know if you can see this this is a plant here and I know how to call this a plant because I have been taught to call this a plant this is a microphone we know different things because we have been taught in that specific way to grow up in that way and understand things or learn things in the way they are so if I talk about something you would understand that if you have been using the same language but if I talk in a different language apni kemon achen apni ki bhalo achen khawa dawa korechen ajke all the hindi speakers in this class wouldn't be able to understand a word of what i said right now because you do not know the semiotics or the semantics of this language structuralist theories of language says that everything you speak must have a signified and a signified relation behind it which we are going to discuss this is an archaeological site as you can see these are all graves i'm standing in the midst of history i am in a boiling pot of history and uh, well everything you see around me has a story to tell but can we communicate without speaking 
if I make a facial expression like does that mean I'm confused or does that mean I'm very happy with you if this is confused or if this is not confused is this happy this is a prime example of human communication with animals and it's beautiful I think this happy face has a lot more to say than many human faces. Is this black? Okay, so I suppose you know that this is black. But why is this black? Because you have been taught to understand or believe that this is black. You have associated this color with the word black. And this is black. But why is this not blue? Why is this not red? Why is this not white? Because your association rules in your mind says that this is black. And you are always going to think this is black. Language is something which preserves as well. Language is a continuum of thoughts of, of uh, everything. Language is a combination of thoughts, of memories, of traditions, of cultures and everything which is bound together in one continuum which preserves everything. When the last speaker of a language dies, the language dies along with that last speaker. But if a linguist like me had preserved a part of that language, that part of that language can live on through the linguists or maybe someone else who wants to learn that language later on. Language is more than what we can comprehend. Language is a lot more than what we think about. Language is not just a spoken thing or the written thing. The written part of language came into existence only when people understood that we cannot preserve language without writing it down. Oral traditions of language all throughout the ages and all throughout history make sense only when a person can live on with the last generation. What about the other generations? What about the loss of population in a particular place? What, what if every person in a one mile radius just vanishes and probably this continuum of language is lost forever? This might not even be a dialect, maybe a few phonological differences in the speech we use in this one kilometer or one mile radius but that would be lost forever language is like an envelope around human beings and the society we live in everything we speak everything we think when we speak everything we use when we communicate everything is a part of language and linguistics linguistics is probably what you can call an adjective for language so you can easily understand how vast the scope of such a subject is. The last thing, let me leave you with an important thought. What is time? Have you ever thought about what is time and why do we comprehend time the way we do? Why is it that one second is one second? Time, as physicists would say to you, is just an unit in physics. But time is something which wouldn't exist if language never existed in the first place. Bees, birds, animals, do they follow time? Yes, they wake up. They wake up when they are hungry or when they have to save themselves. We, we are governed by time. I don't have a watch on me right now, but well, I can take out my phone and check. We are not governed by the actual physicist's time. We are governed by the concept of time, which is governed by language. That brings me to the end of this uh, brief discussion and a brief introduction to this course. I hope we spend some time discussing a lot more issues than I have discussed today in this video. Thank you. Language is interesting and linguistics is too. Und ich liebe es. <laughs>